This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek on KPOO. Joining us today on Workweek is Professor Francis Boyle, who is a professor at the University of Illinois and uh, teaches international law at the University of Illinois College of Law. He has served as counsel for Bosnia and Herzegovina and has been a staunch supporter of the rights of indigenous people and Palestinians. He has also drafted the Biological Weapons Act and has examined the recent 2019 Wuhan coronavirus and believes that it is an offensive biological weapon and that the World Health Organization is aware of this. Welcome to Workweek, Professor Boyle. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me on again and my best to your listening audience. Yes, I, you know, having drafted that implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention, I and that was passed unanimously by both houses of the U.S. Congress and signed into law by President George Bush Sr., I routinely monitor uh, outbreaks of disease around the world, both for uh, uh, humans and uh, animals, to see if there might be a biological warfare agent at work. So I followed uh, what was uh, uh, going on there at uh, Wuhan, and eventually reached the conclusion that uh, what we are dealing here uh, is an offensive biological warfare uh, agent that leaked out of the Wuhan Biosafety Level 4 uh, laboratory there uh, that has been uh, DNA genetically uh, engineered with uh, gain-of-function properties that simply uh, accelerates the DNA genetically engineering for a biowarfare um, agent in the first place. Um, and as far as I can tell right now, Steve, just having read the uh, public record, it does appear as if it's uh, uh, a combination of what's called a camera, that basically you have the uh, SARS, uh, and we know that that facility has previously worked with SARS, and SARS leaked out of there at least twice before, uh, combined with the flu virus, and it appears also uh, combined with uh, HIV that, you know, leads to AIDS at a minimum. Uh, The lethality is about 15 percent. Infectivity is about 83 uh, percent. Uh, Despite what you are being told with the gain-of-function property, it, it travels through the air at least six feet if someone coughs or sneezes. Um, and uh, it can infect, you know, maybe anywhere from three to five people in, in the immediate uh, vicinity. Uh, the incubation period is 14 days, and people can have the coronavirus and transmit it, but still be asymptomatic. That is, that you don't look sick, you don't sound sick, but you are sick, and you can make uh, others sick. So it's my opinion that, you know, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, the Chinese government, the first case was December 1st. It had nothing at all to do with the, uh, you know, the food uh, uh, central there. That's just uh, baloney and propaganda. Clearly the Chinese government knew about it probably right around December uh, one. The first uh, human-to-human transmission was December 15. So the Chinese government has been lying about it since then. Uh, This is a uh, a specially designated uh, WHO research lab. Now imagine that, the WHO uh, uh, specially designating uh, a biowarfare lab. Uh, So the the WHO is in on this. Uh, these BSL-4 facilities are only good for research, developing, testing, and stockpiling uh, biological warfare uh, weapons. So, Steve, in a nutshell, uh, it's my assessment that's where we are today. And this uh, growing, you know, expansion of this virus, um, they don't know how to contain it at this point. Uh, Wuhan has been locked down. They're talking about going house to house and pulling people out of their homes. They don't have the resources. uh, And yet um, it doesn't seem like there's uh, the WHO is really telling people where this might have come from. I mean, are you surprised that, as a matter of fact, also that they arrested doctors in in China and Wuhan who were discussing this uh, this uh, virus? Right. Right. Well, Well, Steve, please understand, I'm not here to bash China or Chinese or 
their communist system of government. Under international law, they're fully entitled to have whatever you know type of government they want over there. But it is very clear that uh, the Chinese government, obviously at the highest level, has, has lied and covered up about this uh, from at, this leak, at least from December 1, and it continues uh, till today. The WHO knows all about it, uh, and they're lying, too. You saw Tedros, the director over there, meeting with President Xi and smiling, shaking his hand and yucking it up with him and saying that, uh, oh, you're doing such a great job. Well, you know, it's clear they're in on the cover-up, and you can't believe anything they're saying. Um, Likewise, I'm sure the CDC knows here in the United States, the National Institutes of Health, uh, NIAID, et cetera, <laughs> They're up, they've been up to their eyeballs in this same type of dirty bio-warfare work uh, here in the United States. I can't, uh, I haven't looked in a while. I think we have maybe 12 of these uh, uh, BSL-4 f- facilities here in the United States, research, developing, testing, stockpiling, every type of hideous uh, biological warfare agent uh, uh, you can possibly imagine. This is Dr. Mengele type uh, stuff, all the uh, so-called life scientists involved in it. And the last time I crunched the numbers on that in 2015, there were about 13,000 scientists involved in this Dr. Mengele type work just here in the United States. Uh, all these BSL-3 and I, four and three facilities should be uh, immediately uh, uh, shut down um, you know, what can I say? This is a wake-up call, certainly here in the United States, to get rid of these things. And we're going to have to contain, contain this. And uh, I, I just don't know if we will be able to do this. We, we will have to see, uh, Steve. And, of course, the biotech industry, which is big in California, na- uh, has many uh, pl- uh, plants, facilities. Uh, there's a lack of uh, regulation uh, the biotech industry, Cal OSHA, they don't really regulate it. They regulate themselves. And you are aware of cases like Joni Chow, her husband Malcolm, at the University of Illinois and uh, uh, University of Chicago, who was contaminated. Is there a systemic? That's problem? right. And they they were doing bio warfare work up there. At the, uh, this is offensive biological warfare work up there in Chicago. I, I'm an alumnus there, of course, and it violates my uh, the biological weapons convention and my. Uh, and my Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act that provides life in prison. And yes, the government has allowed the entire biotech industry uh, to regulate themselves, which is completely uh, preposterous and ridiculous. Uh, And just to give you an idea, uh, Steve, the last time, again, I crunched the numbers for a big interview I gave, and that was uh, uh, October of 2015, uh, since 9-11-2001, here in the United States, we have spent uh, $100 billion as of 2015 on research, development, testing of uh, biological uh, warfare. Now, to put that into perspective, Steve, the Manhattan Project to develop the atom bomb in constant dollars in 2015 uh, was uh, $40 billion. So, of course, this is all weapons-related uh, work, whatever lies they're telling you. And I would add in, although I haven't crunched the numbers recently, an extra $5 billion per year since 2015. So, you know, basically, you know, we're talking about $120 billion on this. Uh, we have an offensive biological warfare industry here in the United States. And it seems clear to me, the, you know, I, I, Steve, I don't have, because of Vietnam, I've never worked for the U.S. government. I've never had a security uh, clearance. I have no access to uh, secret information or anything like that. Everything I'm telling you is in, in the public record and the scientific literature. So certainly the Chinese could figure this out on their own. And they decided to respond in kind. And so, regretfully, uh, this has, uh, you know, has blown back uh, upon them. But my attitude there is, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. Uh, I feel terribly for them. And this still could happen to us if we do not immediately shut down uh, these BSL-4 and BSL-3 uh, facilities. And then we have the containment problem here in the United States, you know, Steve, I I don't support President Trump one way or the other, uh, 
but I do not believe this, these uh, swamp creature scientists he has around him are giving proper advice to him as to how to contain this, because they've all been up to their eyeballs in biological warfare work. The CDC, for example, uh, Steve, uh, 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 under the Reagan administration, they and the American Type Culture Collection sent 40 different shipments of biological warfare agents to Saddam Hussein in Iraq in the hope and expectation uh, that he would weaponize them and then use them against Iran, uh, which, you know, he did not do or he didn't get to or whatever. In any event, when our troops were over there, they were ordered to blow up all these facilities, <laughs> and they were, they were infected. And they were and contaminated the, themselves. That is, that is correct. And so these, our, our, our own, the CDC's own biological warfare agents poisoned our own troops and was a contributing factor to the Gulf War syndrome that, you know, has at least murdered now 11,000 11, U.S. troops and it, it disabled over 100,000. So how can you trust anything the, the CDC is telling you? I certainly don't. And a, NIH has also been funding this Dr. Mengele type work up their kazoo. So you can't trust them either. So, I, you know, I really think... Um, you know, President Trump, with all his faults, I hear he's allergic to, uh, uh, neuralgic to diseases and things, needs to get some, you know, outside independent experts in there and explain to him how dangerous all this stuff really is, how to contain it, and then to shut down all these BSL-4 and BSL-3 facilities. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking with Professor Francis Boyle about this virus and the possibility that, in fact, it's from a uh, laboratory in China and it's being hidden by the WHO. So thanks for joining us on Workweek Radio, Professor Boyle. Well, thanks, Steve. And, uh, you know, you and I go way back, so keep up the good work out there. Well, thank you. This has been Workweek Radio on KPOO. Thanks to our line operator, Cosme Tori. You can reach Workweek Radio at labormedia1 at gmail.com. You can also find us on SoundCloud at Workweek Radio. This is KPOO San Francisco at 89.5 FM and KPOO.Solidarity Has No Borders.